Hello and welcome everyone who are watching this video. My name is Mama Adi and today we are going to learn about ionizing and non-ionizing radiation in 15 minutes. Before we begin, in your lifetime, have you ever used a smartphone? Went for an x-ray checkup? or even reheat your food in a microwave oven. Well, I'm pretty sure most of you have done some of the things or all of the things that I mentioned before. And if you have, well, I got some bad news for you. You have been exposed to radiation. Oh no! But what kind of radiation are we talking about exactly. Now fasten your seat belt because that is what we are going to discover for today's lesson. So here's what you are going to learn at the end of this presentation. You will be able to describe ionizing and non-ionizing radiation as well as differentiate three types of ionizing radiation in radioactive decay. Are you all ready? Let's get started. Okay, let's take a look first at ionizing radiation. Now, what is ionizing radiation and how does it work? Let's consider a radiation. In this context, I will be using alpha particle, which is a type of radioactive radiation. We are going to talk more about alpha particle further as we go uh, to the presentation. We also need to have a molecule. In this case, I will be using a molecule as an example. Now, the alpha particle will pass through the neutral air molecules, which is air. When it passes, the air becomes ionized. It produces uh, positive and negative ions. So basically, when a radiation such as radioactive radiation passes through the air, it will produce positive and negative ions. This whole process is called ionizing radiation. Let's move on to uh, non-ionizing radiation. Take a look at this diagram. We have here non-ionizing radiation and then we have ionizing radiation. There are many types of waves exist in the non-ionizing radiation such as very low frequency wave, radio waves, infrared waves, microwaves, visible light waves and some portions of the ultraviolet rays. Now what can we say about this? So uh, non-ionizing radiation, it refers to any type of electromagnetic radiation that does not carry enough energy to ionize atoms or molecules. Well, unlike ionizing radiation, this type of waves do not have enough energy to ionize uh, let's say the air molecules uh, into producing positive and negative ions. In other words, it can be considered as a safe radiation. Let's go back at the things that I asked you before. So we see smartphone uses radio wave frequency. Radio wave frequency is here. Microwave oven uses microwave frequency which is here so we can uh, it's it is uh, safe to assume that radio waves and microwaves are a safe radiation however x-ray which exists here in the in the category of ionizing radiation it can be harmful to our body if we are exposed too frequently that's why uh, if we go to the doctor the doctor does not advise you to take an x-ray checkup more for more than like two or three times 
in six months. Now that we can differentiate the two types of radiation, let's dive a bit further into the types of ionizing radiation. First, we have alpha radiation, which is denoted by the Greek letter alpha here. Yeah? And this usually exists in a helium nucleus, for example. Next, we have beta radiation which is denoted by the Greek letter beta. For examples of beta radiation is a high-speed electron. The last one is gamma radiation, which is denoted by the letter gamma. Examples of gamma radiation is electromagnetic wave. In the next few slides, we are going to take a look at some of their characteristics based on a certain criteria. Now, we are going to identify the charge of particle that each of the radioactive radiation possess. In the case of alpha radiation, the charge of particle is positive. So, we can say that the helium nucleus is positively charged. Next, for beta radiation, the charge of particle is negative. So as we know, electron, the nature of electron itself is negative. So what happens when uh, an electron is positively charged? Well, this is just for your additional information. When the electron is positive large, uh, positively charged sorry it is called as a positron now let's move on to gamma radiation gamma radiation is neither positive or negative it does not have a charge therefore it is neutral now these radioactive radiations also have their own ionizing power. For alpha radiation, the ionizing power is high. It's quite, it is quite a powerful uh, radiation. For beta radiation, the ionizing power is moderate. So, so, not so strong, not so weak. But for gamma radiation, the ionizing power is low. It is the weakest of all the three radioactive radiations. Now let's explore the each radioactive radiation's penetration power. Well, as uh, you saw before, alpha radiation has very strong ionizing power. So the penetration must be power as well, correct? Well, let's see. Actually, the alpha radiation has low penetration power. Strong ionizing power but low penetration power. For beta radiation, the penetration power is moderate. Same as the strength of uh, ionizing power and for gamma radiation the penetration power is very high now we can see that the two actually uh, is vice versa to in respect to their ionizing power so we have an illustration here we have uh, the radioactive the radioactive salts the radioactive salts sorry emits from this so you see here because of the penetration power is low alpha radiation cannot even penetrate a piece of paper uh, for beta radiation which is here it can through uh, it can penetrate through the, the paper but when it um, came across the aluminium which is quite thin but still 
cannot penetrate it. The last one, gamma radiation, we know that the penetration power is very high, so it can penetrate the paper and the aluminium as well, but to some extent. From here we can see we have lead here which is 10 cm in thickness. Cannot, uh, the gamma radiation cannot penetrate through it. But um, with respect to the both of the beta radiation and alpha radiation, it is uh, it has quite strong penetration power. It is quite easy to remember uh, these two factors, which is the ionizing power and the penetration power. You just remember one of the one criteria, and you can easily remember the other one. Just know that the ionizing power of alpha and gamma radiation is the vice versa of its penetration power. Now let's consider when these radioactive radiations are emitted through an electric field. Now we have these diagrams. We have the radioactive source and an electric field consists of a negative plate and positive plate. Now alpha particle as we know before is positively charged so it deflects towards the negative plate. Beta particle on the other hand is negatively charged so it is by nature for it to deflect to the, towards the positive plate and for gamma radiation being neutral as it is deflects neither towards negative plate and positive plate when the gamma radiation is emitted it just went through this electric field without any deflection We can also consider these radioactive radiations when they are emitted through a magnetic field. Here we have the diagram where the radioactive source emitted and passes through the magnetic field. Now, alpha particle deflects upwards. Beta particle deflects downwards. And gamma particle has no deflection. When compared to uh, the radioactive sources that passes through the electric field, they are somehow similar. They have the same pattern and in a way follows the same principle. Before we end our today's lesson, Let's summarize what we have learned today. First, we have learned about ionizing radiation, where the end product produces positive and negative ions. We have also take a look at non-ionizing radiation, where most of it are safe, and the main characteristics are the non-ionizing radiation does not have enough energy to ionize molecules unlike the ionizing radiation. And last one, we have take a look at the types of ionizing radiation uh, and each of their characteristics. We have take a look at the characteristics of alpha particle. We have also taken a look at the beta particle and as well as the gamma particle. In terms of its charges, its ionizing power, its penetration power, and how it deflects in magnetic and electric field. Now I'm not going to let you guys go finish this video empty handed. So here is a question to test your understanding. Now we saw that the deflections of the alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles in electric field and magnetic field. If you observe carefully, 
you can see that the arrows of the deflection are a bit different, particularly in alpha particle and beta particle. In term, uh, to be exact, in terms of their distance. Now, why does the alpha particle goes further than beta particle before it starts to deflect? The answer is for you to think. Let me know after the presentation. With that, I end my presentation here. Thank you very much for your attention and for listening through this lesson. Have a good day.